If you simply want to test the spray pattern of SIS or SIS E fuel injectors, well, it's actually incredibly easy. You can make do with a bicycle pump, or in my case, I'm going to use an air compressor, and this piece of hose between the air duster and the uh, injector is just to hold a fluid of my choice. For this test, I just decided to use CRC. Um, that's not ideal, but it's what I could quickly find on this work day that I'm supposed to be working, but in my shed playing with injectors. So I only put a small amount in there. Uh, we can already see the spray pattern that this thing has. Um, those dribbling bits, uh, just residual pressure in the hose. Um, when it's actually got the full pressure applied, this injector does have a pretty decent spray pattern. This is just a junk injector I had lying around um, from Red's uh, original setup. I have no intention of ever using it again. Um, but here's another test. Um, I've this time filled the hose up with uh, prep wash, which is definitely not advisable because it's probably dissolving the hose in the process. Um, but once again, we can see a pretty reasonable spray pattern. Uh, it's probably incidentally cleaning it out as well, probably uh, a bit too well. Uh, and it's blocking it up in the process with bits of rubber. Uh, and you can see the spray pattern deteriorating until the injector goes bang. So this is what I was using for that last test. I would not recommend that because that's not good for the injector, no doubt, and it's contaminating it with bits of rubber. I'd be using kerosene or diesel, and uh, yeah, you don't need anything fancy, an air duster with a pressure set appropriately, or a hand pump or foot pump. And the hose is nothing more than a piece of fuel hose. I adapted the end with an old piece of vacuum tube. Now stay tuned if you want to see what was involved with getting my 20 year old antique compressor actually cooperating because it was not straightforward. So here I am completely unaware of uh, what's ahead of me. I'm just planning to start up my compressor, uh, but the switch doesn't move. I thought, how ridiculous. How is this possible? But it is. It was nothing internal to the switch, that's all testing fine. And yes, the power is off. It's just that this uh, plastic piece is completely fused to the outer housing. I was able to free that up with multi-grips and it looks like I have spilt some chemical that has dissolved the plastic at some stage. The fun didn't end there, so we tried again. Power applied. Turn it on. All seems normal. Not quite. Now, I do remember having this problem in the past before, and there is a one-way valve in here that unloads the cylinders when the compressor motor is deactivated, and I believe that's jammed. Something else that happens when that is going on is that you end up with uh, air being forced past the rings and pressurizing the crankcase of the pump, which is not ideal. So I removed that one-way valve and scrubbed the surface of it that has been eaten away just by sitting around for God knows how long and made it a nice smooth surface. And that's what that check valve looks like inside. And uh, we'll fit that back together and see how it goes.
they're just like anything mechanical. Um, you can't leave these things sitting around for years doing nothing because they deteriorate. 